right. Well, just a um, great win for our team. Great team win. I thought probably played our most complete game of the year, start to finish, um, both offense, defense, special teams. Uh, it was just a really good team win. We started fast. thought it was good for the offense to go down and score. And I um, thought it was just good to settle us in. And our defense, I thought, I mean, to give up three points and a half to an offense that I think is really talented was, was really special. And then for us offensively, I think just to, to have the balance running and throwing was big. And really proud of Kevin, how he played and bounced back, just like we kind of thought he would. But still have to go do it. And um, so, like I said, really good team win against a really good football team. I mean, there was a reason they were undefeated. And, and Pat Narduzzi's, I mean, I was just thinking, this earlier today, he's been there a decade. You're a decade somewhere, you know what you're doing. He's built a great culture there and a great team. And uh, we don't take for granted that we're able to beat a good team. What impressed you most on the offensive side? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, I, I felt really strongly our guys were ready to play and <clears throat> last night and even this morning. And then after warm-ups, I knew they were ready to play. Um, you know, I think probably the toughness. I think there was a lot of toughness that our offense showed tonight. Um, I think our O-line, I mean, every one of those guys playing on the O-line is playing pretty banged up. And uh, from, from J.O. to Logan Parr to Savion Bird, excuse me, to P.J. to, to Ja'Kai. And, um, and then I know Ben gets in there in Chambly. But they're playing hurt. And that's what you do if you're O-lineman. You know, you're t but they, we talked about this game being about toughness. You know, um, we pride ourselves on being a tough and disciplined and united team, and we're playing a team that prides themselves on being tough. And here we are in our ninth game. You know, last week was physical. We had some guys banged up. And so I think for the O-line to do that, you know, both Brashard and LJ have been in and out of banged up. Uh, we're, we're getting thinner at wide out. You know, Jake wasn't able to play. RJ's out. Melo's been out. I um, thought Keyshawn was really tough tonight. I thought Mucci and Jordan made plays. Roderick Daniels, like, what can you say about that guy? He's just a great football player. And then for Kevin, you know, for, I thought Kevin showed a lot of toughness. So, um, on the spot, best thing I can say is what impressed me most was their toughness. I mean, Kevin responded like we all thought he would because we know him. And, um, you know, when a game like that happens, Yes, every time I saw anyone all the way till this game today, I got asked about six turnovers, and, and, all, and that's fair. And that means he's getting asked about it, and that's – I get it. Until you go out and prove that what we thought was true, that he had had seven starts, six great ones, and one rough one, well, six to one is a pretty good ratio. You know, every quarterback has a tough start. This is what we thought, but he's got to go out and do it. And that's hard. Um, but I thought De'Eric King did a great job leading him through the week. You know, it's great to have a guy that's a former player been in that situation before. Um, I mean, I, I thought he just got him ready to go. And our st offensive staff did a good job getting our offense ready to go. I thought um, – and then he just – he cut it loose and played. He didn't play timid. He, he, that's what you were worrying about as a coach, is he going to go out there and try not to make mistakes. Because, you know, and he didn't. I mean, the throw he made uh, to Mucci – on the third and long, back shoulder, you know, he made a couple other great throws, a touchdown throw to Brashard, a throw late to Keyshawn. You know, I mean, even the one that got called back, like he was playing free and playing aggressive, and that's what we wanted him to do. You want, like, the coach speak answer or the real one? No. I mean, it's kind of all the same. Like, we still had, no matter where the, whether someone else lost or not, we had to just keep doing it, and we still do. we got three games left, and we go out and don't take care of our business, and it doesn't matter. Um, but there, to your point, there was no guarantees. Now there's, there was four undefeated conference uh, teams coming into this day, and now there's two. Um, so I don't know. Our, our team and our staff has done a really good job of literally being present and just working on chasing the standard that this team has set for ourselves each week, they did it tonight at a high level. Um, you know, the last time this happened, we went on the road and beat Louisville. There was a big win for our program. And we had two weeks to sit and be told how great we were before we had to go to Stanford. It's going to be no different. Now we're going to have two weeks to beat. We'll, who see, we'll see where we're ranked, whatever. We know at the end of the day, to your point, we control our own destiny. And in two weeks, a team that's pretty good that beat us last year is coming in here. So um, I think it means that uh, – SMU, 
our program belongs at this level and our program is capable of competing at a high level at this level, which we all believed, but it's no different than everything else I just said about Kevin. We had to go do it. And we're not done and we've not accomplished anything yet, but we put ourselves in position that in the middle of November, we're competing for a conference championship in the ACC in our first year in the league. So I think our players and our staff deserve a ton of credit for that. Coach, Coach three years ago, um, y'all were 120th in the nation in rushing defense. This year, first in the ACC rushing defense, defense dominated tonight. How has that happened in such a short amount of time? Well, two things. One, Scott Simons, Maurice Crum, Ricky Hundley, Calvin Thibodeau, Sam Dunham, and everybody else on that defensive staff. They're special. They're really good. And I'm so thankful they're on my side. And, you know, in year one, kind of came in with what we had, went out and, you know, improved on that for year two. And last year had a championship defense. And then to take it to the level it's this year to have the number one rush defense in the ACC, now 10 games into the season, I think speaks volume of their ability to recruit, develop relationships, motivate, put people in position, teach them. All those things. And the second thing is, I mean, it just is equally as important. Give the credit to our players. I mean, at SMU, we've been known as an offensive school. And a lot of times that doesn't come with toughness. Now, we, we really believe that we're a tough team on offense, but our defensive guys starting last year changed the culture of SMU football from a defensive standpoint with what they did last year and what they've done so far this year. Um, and it all started with physicality. We have a group that believes in physicality and swarming to the ball, and a lot of that has to do with stopping the run. So our players and our, our defensive staff deserve all that credit, and they went out and they put the work in because that's how life works. You don't just get anything by hoping for it. They went out, got the right young men in here to be on our team. They coached them up the right way, put them in position to be successful, and then they went out and did the hard part and did it. I mean, it looks like he's done it for a long time, doesn't it? You know, back-to-back um, -back weeks with 20 carries. Again, goes back to toughness. You know, both him and LJ at times tonight would get hit and, you know, and they have those lingering things. And now we got two more weeks and hopefully that freshes them up. Um, but, man, he, he was tough tonight and he's really good too. She had one, sorry. Thank you. Um, with the college football playoff rankings and, uh, you know, a lot of teams yeah. kind of losing <clears throat> you guys going for the ACC championship, what does it mean to you that you might possibly win the ACC championship but be a team that might go to the college football playoffs? Well, great question. I mean, you and Chris both, we're not talking about championships right now. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, it, but but Tuesday, the rankings that matter come out. And don't get it wrong. Don't get me wrong. We've been humbled to be ranked in the AP poll and, and in the coaches poll. That's a big deal um, for our program and any time, definitely in year one. But now Tuesday nights, you find out what the group who ranks, whose rankings matter now the rest of the way think about you. And so, um, again, we're going to find out where we are Tuesday. And we know we have a lot to play for these last three games. But we're only going to worry about Boston College. We're going to celebrate this win, maybe since we don't play next week through Monday. And, and then we're going to start worrying about Boston College because if we get ahead of ourselves, none of it will matter. When you have a game interrupted by a potentially scary injury, yeah. uh, A, do you have any updates? And B, how do you and your staff help your team regroup and get back after it after that? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, when that happens, all the other stuff doesn't matter anymore, right? Um, fortunately, stuff that – we knew, you know, our, our medical team did a great job. He was conscious. He was moving early on. So that was a positive that we knew down there on the turf that maybe everyone else didn't know. Um, our medical staff did a great job of keeping him calm and, and everything. Um, but anytime it involves your head or your neck and, and you're still saying you feel pain, they're going to be extra cautious. And so that's what they did. Um, even Pat Narduzzi was fantastic, came over to check on him. I mean. Um, everybody in the stadium stops and just is worried about A.J. Uh, the good news, I can't tell you, and they all, he was back on the sidelines at the end of the game. Uh, and, and I have not talked to our medical team since the game, but in the fourth quarter they told me he was back. All the scans and everything they did at the hospital were all – came back negative in a good way. And that, you know, again, I don't know the exact diagnosis of what happened, but I know he's going to be okay. And he was standing on the sidelines in a neck brace, and it, it sounds like he's going to be okay. So a scary situation is going to turn out okay.
Oh, yeah, and that was to your question, too. I mean, our guys were pretty shook up. They cared about him. Um, it helped that we were able to say, look, guys, we think he's okay. I mean, our, our medical staff was saying, hey, we think he's okay. But, you know, we got – and but it's still hard. I thought our, our defensive staff, we were on defense at the time, did a really nice job of calming them down. And, and they did a good job of saying, okay, we know A.J.'s being taken care of. Let's go play. It's hard to do as a player, too, because, I mean, he just got hurt playing the sport you're playing. And they did. They got to stop, and then we go down and get a field goal. So the kids handled it as good as you could ask. Coach, you talked about this potentially being the most complete game the team has played all year. How much of that do you think comes from being back at home for the first time in a month and having you know, your fan base <clears throat> not let your team take your foot off the gas? Yeah, I think it means a lot. I think being home was a big deal, probably more than I knew. Like, really, I kind of part of me is like, I don't know, are we going to be flat because we're home, we're overexcited or whatever, you know? Oh, they were they were just the right amount of excited, and um, but yeah, I mean I, we hadn't been here since September 28th. You know, technically I guess it was back to back sellouts, but really the last three times we've been here, TCU, Florida State, and now Pitt, we've come out of that tunnel for a big game and a big moment for SMU, and the place is full, and it feels full and it sounds full and it's a real atmosphere that can be an advantage for us and and our defense and our team, and we feed off that. That's what a home field. Um, advantage does for you. And so I, I probably didn't put enough stock on the fact that we hadn't had it for a month. They were really excited about it. And, uh, and yeah, I think it was our most complete game just because I don't think we had any lulls, really. You know, even at Louisville, the third quarter, we had a lull. The only lull we had tonight was when we put our backups in. And, uh, and those guys competed their tail off. But I just thought it was really complete. And I think being at home had a lot to do with it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's nostalgic in a good way for a lot of them to be back. Yep. As a head coach, you don't get to do all that fun stuff, like homecoming and all the lettermen back and the recognizing the Cotton Bowl team. You, you just got to go do your job and try to put, a, put the team out there ready to play. But uh, it was really cool to do it, you know, because that was a big game back when we beat Pitt 7-3, to Dan Marino and the Pony Express and Eric Dickerson. Uh, we always – we usually have a current player or uh, a current staff member coach spend some time with our team. We have a little deal on at the hotel on Friday nights called Brotherhood that we just go 15, 20 minutes. And last night it was Eric Dickerson made a special appearance and he spoke to our team. So stuff like that was really cool. And to see those guys in the locker room after the game fired up, to see Bryson walking out for the coin toss with his with his uh, trophy, you know, and then in the student, like all that stuff's a big deal, but it's what makes SMU special. So um, good to deliver in that moment. So I didn't see it, um, but then I was told about it. And then uh, I guess our media team saw it and cut it out and put it. Um, I think he's the greatest coach to ever do it. it. Looks like he knows what he's talking about to me, the way Kevin played tonight. You know, I, I think uh, we're just fine, nobody talking about us. We know how good Kevin is. We don't need anybody to tell us, and neither does Kevin. It's nice to be recognized. Our team, I think our defense, you know, I think our defense doesn't get talked about enough, but I also don't care, you know, because I'm proud of them and I'm proud of our staff. And um, So pretty cool, though, for Nick Saban to say about you if you're Kevin, you know, hey, I think this is maybe the most underrated player in the country, and then for him to go out and make him look good. So. Do what? Maybe. We'll see. See if we can find a new way to repackage it. Um, no, we definitely got to worry about it now. There's there's plenty of rat poison out there for us. Even if you're not like letting them run the full offense and try to score per se, you know we're really we were really just trying to get out of there. Honestly, we would have ran it every play if, if they would have let us. Um, but, yeah, for Keldrick Luster to get in there, um, for Jamari and Carroll to get in there on defense, for, um, you know, Medlock and Booker, and I'm missing a lot of names to be out there. Play, that, that's all meaningful because there's still something to – you don't know when you're going to need them, maybe this year, but definitely in the future. And every rep matters, even if it's maybe not the same intensity of a rep in the first quarter. It still knocks some 
some newness and rust off that will help them down the road. So it's always good to get those guys in the game. And they work hard too. So, like, you love that they get to be rewarded and get to play because they put in the work all week too, just like everybody else. Yeah. 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 You know, we knew that <clears throat> with what Pitt does to stop the run, they give you those, and you know, we knew we were going to have to take those shots. Um, we thought, honestly, we'd probably have to take more. The, they, they ended up blitzing us and pressuring us more than, than they – I mean, they, they do blitz a lot, but they even blitzed us, I think, more than we expected. And when they blitz, they give you more of the, the underneath stuff. you got to get out of your hands quick. Versus when they don't, that's when you usually get your your one on one opportunities. But um, you know whether it was Mucci making the play or Keyshawn's couple plays, um, that was big for us. That's kind of to some degree, not every game, but a lot of games we haven't gotten a lot of one on ones with our outside receivers. And then when we have, we maybe haven't been as crisp there as we needed to be this year. And so I thought Keyshawn and Mucci and Jordan and, and Kevin knew going into this game, our outside receivers are going to have to win some one on ones against their corners. And I thought. We probably won more than our fair share, so that was really positive for us. Boy, I hope they're worried about him now. Yeah, um, we felt really good about about Matthew. I mean, I think he had a good game last week, and he he's shown, like I said, when we had a guy like R.J. Maryland with such a matchup problem that you know he got used differently, and Matt was doing a good job in the role he was in, and the ball can only go around to so many people, but you know. When we lost RJ, that's a big loss for our offense, and it still is. We did feel really confident, though, that Matt could make plays for us. And honestly, the touchdown is a cool play. The biggest play was the one he made in the first quarter on third and seven or eight. We run a mesh, and he's the fourth option, and Kevin gets to his fourth option, hits him, and then he runs a guy over, stays on his feet to get the first down and gets us in scoring position. That they thought that was a big play in the game. So, again, it just helps. We knew our depth would be important. We got a lot of guys hurt tonight. I don't know who will be available in two weeks. That's the way this thing goes down the stretch. The depth is really helping us, and, and Matt's a great example of that. Obviously, in week 10, when you guys lose a game, but I'm curious, in this new college football playoff world, where winning the ACC means that you're probably in the big dance, like, how does that change the game? Like, you know, you're going to have to win this. <clears throat> it changes a lot, because last year we did everything we were supposed to do, and we didn't get into whatever we were able to get into. Um, but it was out of our control. Being, that's, that's why you want to be in a league like the ACC. It's a great league, and we have an opportunity to, if we, if every year all 17 teams know if we win our league, we're in. And if we get to Charlotte, we got a chance to be in, you know. And, and so um, that's a big deal. And, um, you know, because that's, guys need to, need to have something to play for. And that's when the season starts, that's what every kid in America is playing for. And to know that we can do it in this league is special. Yeah, Elijah has a hand injury. I don't know the specifics of it. Um, you know, optimistic that we'll get him back. Um, Kobe, I do not have the official diagnosis. It looked like he got his bell rung. So I don't know if he's diagnosed with a concussion or not. But um, I think he'll, you know, everything I know he's going to be okay. I think he was celebrating in the locker room with us. But I don't have the full download of all that yet.